Night Live. I was trying to adjust the camera and I hit go live a little bit earlier than intended. That's okay. Um, so today we're going to do an acrylic pour on a vase. Let me get this pulled up on my computer so I can chit chat with you. And for anyone watching this later on replay, this is a live video. So the whole purpose of it is for me to be able to chit chat with you guys, answer questions, etc. Also, the last time I did acrylic pours on vases live, there were quite a few people that were like, I can't believe you didn't show the finished project, um, which would be literally impossible. I would have to be live for a couple weeks to be able to uh, complete it, let it dry, resin seal it, etc. So once again, it's a live video. Please have realistic expectations. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I might need to adjust things a little bit. Got you pulled up on the computer. Hey Katie, hey Wendy. And as you tune in, do say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. Um, so I just did a vase with basically these same colors. It's actually a custom piece for someone, but I wanted to do one more option that I'm Hopefully, I don't know, just wanted to do one more option, basically. Hey, Renee, I'm going to give everyone just a minute to tune in while I grab my gloves and stuff. Whoa, while I fall over, and then we'll get started. I'm going to just reuse this old cup, I think. Why not? All right, how's everyone's uh, week going? Yep, hey Mel from Rainy SoCal. I'm in right there with you. It seems like it's never stopping, which is quite impressive for our area. All right, so let me put this where it's going to go, and then I'll adjust it. So make sure you guys can see the full thing in the camera. I'm going to raise it up a little bit, it looks like. Or just move this back. Let's see. We'll raise it up. I'll move this forward a little. All right, I think that'll be pretty good. Okay, let's get to pouring. Ignore any mess back here. Oh, wow. It's so much more zoomed in on the phone than it is on the computer. That's so weird. Okay, let me adjust this just a little bit more. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. I know, it's very annoying. Oh, hey, Lou from Montreal. Hey, Veronica. Trying to go real slow here. Okay. I think that'll be pretty good. Let's do it. So in terms of setup, this is a glass vase, by the way. I don't do anything to prep it, except I clean it with some isopropyl alcohol. This is 91%. Um, you probably don't even have to use 91%. That's just what I have. And that'll just get all the dust, dirt, fingerprints, etc., off of the vase so that it holds the um, paint as well as possible. I do also seal my vases with resin, which also helps. So I'm just gonna use this same cup, and here we go. All the paints that I'm using are mixed media girl pouring paints. So I'm gonna use a lot of white, like a lot, a lot. Um, I'm going to use a hint of teal, and I'm gonna to try to make it a hint. It tends to really take over 
I'm going to use a hint of turquoise, which that's what this color is called in case anyone's offended. And then I'm using a lot of black and gray as well. I don't need to use actually that much gray because I'm going to use black and white, which will make gray, but it'll at least give us a little bit of a different tone. So this is smoke gray here and then a lot more white. Now an exciting note is pouring medium is back in stock. So if you order now, it will ship right away. Veronica, are you able to grab that link for me? And I'm using a 10 by 10 canvas underneath here, which takes about just a little over six ounces of paint, okay? A little bit of gray, and then I'm gonna fill in the rest with some white. So I want this to be pretty light colored and then kind of marbled a little bit with um, the teal and the black essentially, is what I'm going for. On the last one that I did, I really liked it, but the blue actually took over a little more than I wanted. So go grab your pouring medium. Um, all of these paints are mixed with the mixed media girl pouring medium. And then also there are only two resin mystery boxes in stock right now. And there's an art auction going on on Facebook that ends tomorrow. So I'm gonna essentially tree ring this on the top. And it doesn't really matter how fast you go, but you can adjust where you're pouring if you want more of a particular color on one side. Like over here, I have a lot of white, so I'm gonna go over here to get some of that color out for this side. Okay, this is exciting. All right, so Veronica's got links for you there. How's everyone doing? I feel like Kind of quiet in the chat box. Anyone have any exciting, um, what's this spring? St. Patty's Day um, plans or anything like that? It's actually my daughter's birthday in about a week. So the celebration is going to kind of start this weekend. Daylight savings is still dragging you down. I totally understand. I feel ya. All right, so I typically like to let this drip for probably about eh, two to four minutes-ish. Um, I'm doing okay. I've gotten over my cold, which is good. I'm gonna rotate this so you guys can see all the sides. So I typically will end up with one side with a lot more white than the other, which is this side, however, um, it will surprise you. It'll seem really, really white until it, it's going to keep dripping for quite a while. And a lot of that white will actually disappear. It's got other colors underneath it and stuff. So I never worry too much about it. Um, if you want a lot of stark white, I would probably recommend either using a split cup or doing um, a clean pour. <laughs> yeah, it looks like an ocean wave. All right, let's rotate back one more here. Carefully. I'm definitely digging this. So let's let it, let it drip for like another minute or two, and then we'll move it off to the side. Um, and because of the dripping, it always creates this really pretty feathered look. So. Can't wait to go back to Florida. Totally understand that. <laughs> All right. And um, next month, I think a lot of you already know this, but I will be back at Fluid Art Experience in Seattle. So I really, really hope to see you guys there. Um, even if for some reason you cannot take any of the classes, which one of the cool things about it is that you can take a class. You don't have to take all the classes. You can take just one if you want. 
But if you're in the area, at least stop by and say hi during like, you know, a break or something like that. That'd be pretty cool. All right. I think we're pretty good. It'll still continue to drip. I actually just want to rotate it around one more time so that you guys can see how much this side has changed. Because once again, like I said, it's it's always a little bit deceiving. This was like almost all white. And now look, that color is coming down and covering a lot of that white. Um, I have a lot of online courses. If you go to mixedmediagirl.com, you can click on courses. Those are courses you can take from anywhere at any time. But if you want to do an in-person course, you would go to events. And I have classes in the studio in Pasadena. And then this one in Seattle is obviously in person. I do not do in-person and online classes at the same time because that makes no sense. People in person would not want me on a computer chit-chatting with people, you know what I mean? But um, I have a lot of courses online. And then I do some live classes online as well on Facebook. All right, so I'm gonna gently lift it up by the cup. Don't worry too much if you touch the rim of your vase. Uh, because it is going to keep moving and move it to the side. You can tell that I poured pretty unevenly, but that's okay. I like to let it fill in in the center. If you're impatient, you can kind of push it down and get it to go a little faster. And even as little blue as I put into this, it still kind of took over that Caribbean teal I love, love, love that color, but it is extremely highly pigmented and can definitely take over. But I think this is still gonna be really, really pretty. And I'll move my finger right before the paint gets to it. <laughs> hey Jill, welcome. I love these colors as well. Now, in terms of tilting, there are no rules. I have a lot more paint on this side than on this side, so I will probably start tilting towards that direction first to kind of get it a little more evenly spread out. I also personally am not that much of a fan of centered things. I, I prefer the off-center, so... Um, we'll probably end up with it off center, but it's totally up to you. Uh, if you want it more centered, well, first of all, pour them a little more evenly, but second of all, you can do it on a spinner as well um, to get to keep that design nice and centered. Okay. Hey, Tara. So we're about, about closed up on that hole almost. You don't have to wait for it to close up, but I like to because it will affect your design even slightly. Hey, Erin, it's going good. I was just telling everybody, Erin, that the pouring medium is back in stock. So if you want to order it on the website, we can get it to um, get it to your niece by April 1st. Okay, resin question. Ooh, definitely do not put resin in the microwave. Never, never put it in the microwave. Put it in front of a space heater um, or in a warm room or in a warm water bath. I've even put it in the sun before, but I know in a lot of places there really isn't sun right now, especially or definitely including where I am. Um, so typically I use a space heater. That's the fastest for me, but... Um, last night I put it in a warm room in the office <laughs> that worked not quite as well, but it, it worked better than nothing. And the warmest room in my office, for whatever reason, is the bathroom. <laughs> so I just put the resin in there. I think the, the heat vent is just really good in there. Ooh, yeah. So this is going to have a lot more white, which is good. Kind of moving it towards the corners and then back to the center. I really like this side over here. 
So I definitely want to stretch that out a bit more. And I'm going to bring it back this way a little bit. And there we go. Super pretty. Um, do you have any color, colors that glow in the black light? All of my neons, so all of the electric colors will. And then around Halloween time, I come up with, I, I usually put out the um, glow in the dark uh, color. But right now, just pretty much all the neons. So like the electric lime, the electric purple, electric pink, those should all glow. And even the yellow probably will, but I don't know. <laughs> I'd have to test them. Yeah, each painting is very unique. Let's go ahead and do a close-up because I feel like the camera's pretty far away. All right, camera's going to shake for just a second. And then in, I will also show you guys the first one that I did. I don't know if you guys saw the video on Facebook. Um, but I just wanted to have... It's actually for a custom order, and I'm sure she'll like the first one that I did, but I wanted to give her a couple options. Um, Tara, you're going to have to be a little more specific. If you want, you can shoot me an email or a message, because um, it would depend on the paints you're using, the technique, the actual size of the canvas, etc., etc., etc. There's a lot of factors that go into it. Um, if you go to my Business of Art channel, I have videos on how to price your art. So I would check that out as well. All right, this is the first one that I did. I actually like the painting better, but I might like this face better. I like this painting, I think, better than that one, but that's probably just because I really like blue, but it, it just also came out with a really cool pattern. Um, and then here is the other vase. No problem. So I wanted to have a lot more white, although this one came out really pretty too. So same exact colors, just a little more emphasis on the white with this one. And less blue. <laughs> so you can definitely see that difference in the canvases. But both very pretty. Aw, thanks, sweet. Appreciate it. Um, so okay. um, I don't use push pins on the underside of my canvas, but I do raise it up to dry. So I'm not, I wouldn't leave it flat here. Um, I like to use these painter's pyramids. That's typically what I use and they work well for resin and paint. Ideally you do this before you take your gloves off, but I like to live on the edge. I never leave it flat to dry. This way you will have a pretty nice clean line on the bottom and it'll dry better. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, so that is all we have for today. Um, depending on how next week goes, I think I'm going to go, I'm going to do some resin projects with you guys on the next Wednesday night live, but I would also love, love, love feedback from you on any specific topics you'd like to see covered, any specific techniques. Um, although I also enjoy just chit chatting with you guys and saying hi and everything, but, um, yeah, if there's anything specific you guys would like me to cover, please absolutely let me know. <laughs> I live on the edge. What's the X? -j? <laughs> I'm so confused. 
Uh, yeah. Um, and then another tip for anyone interested is I often like to put my paint cup upside down. If I'm not going to save it for later and I want to use it for a paint skin, I'll just put it upside down for a little while and then I'll pull it up and it'll have really cool paint underneath that I'll let dry and use it in projects because we already have some really cool skins underneath here. Can you use resin on the bathroom floor? <laughs> um, you can, uh, but there's a specific kind of flooring resin that you would want to use for that. And if you check out Stone Coat Countertops, they have actually a kit for it. Um, that's definitely not something I could do on a live video easily because I haven't done a floor before. <laughs> But I do plan on relatively soon um, doing resin on the floor here in my home studio. So that's a project coming up. I couldn't tell you when though. It could be a few months. Could be a couple weeks. It's not going to be a couple weeks. <laughs> it's probably going to be a few months realistically. But um, yeah, you, you can't use just any resin though. Um, or you might be able to, but you'd have to have a particular kind of sealer, and I don't have the answer for that, unfortunately, of what kind you would need. Um, that would be a great question for Stone Coat. Yeah. Good questions, though. Any other questions real quick before we end off? Going once, going twice. All right. Hope everyone has a fantastic rest of your week. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you all next time.